In this video, I'm going to discuss 8Scope's Information Bus Digital Decoding Capabilities. And as the thumbnail indicated, more specifically, the Automotive CAN and the Automotive Single Wire LIN Bus. 8Scope is the Android app that can be found on the Google Play Store that supports a number of budget oscilloscopes. Digital decoding requires the digital module, which is a separate in-app purchase within 8Scope. And once activated, the digital module looks like this. I'm going to start off by opening a save CAN bus waveform. So by now, um, most of you guys are familiar with what these CAN waveforms are supposed to look like. If they're healthy, you're going to be at 2.5 volt. It's going to be a mirror image, one volt on either side. This is a healthy looking waveform here. And you're also familiar that if it's all messed up, then you try to get to the bottom of it, whether it's a bad module that you unplug and then you restore your CAN waveform, or perhaps some of the wiring and connectors. But if it's messy, you try to get the bottom of it until you get your good waveform back. The purpose of this video is to show you that sometimes this is deceiving. You may think by looking at this analog waveform that all is well. When there's actually a communication issue still, but just not shown here. And that's where the digital decoding comes in. We're going to turn on the digital module. And we're going to go for channel one here. All right. Notice that little D here? That's our new digital channel. And these are zeros and ones. If we tap the D and tap that little gear, this menu pops up. We have a choice of a number of protocols that we can decode in. And of course, we want the CAN. Now, to be clear, this is not a full data dump, all right? That is usually done with dedicated hardware, dedicated software, and the people interested in that live in a much different world than us automotive diag types. Right? This is a condensed decoding more suited to automotive diagnostics. So I want to point out a couple of things here. First, this ID block. All right, now that more on that later. The next thing I want to show you is this acknowledge bit. See where it says OK here? And it lines up with that little voltage spike on our analog waveform. Now, this vehicle and this capture shows a well-detailed voltage spike here. Uh, not always seen in all waveforms. To have the acknowledged bit confirmed here is reassuring. And also reassuring is this blue data frame confirmation bar here. Blue is good. Now, hold that thought. We're going to come back here. But first, I want to take you to a LIN bus decoding. We have two LIN bus captures here, courtesy of Steve, who shared them with us on the HScope Telegram group. I'm going to put a link in the video description to that group, which is well on its way to 1,000 members. Pretty cool. Now, these two waveforms are from the same vehicle, a 2019 Honda CRV. We've got one good waveform and one where a fault was intentionally created. Let's open up the good one. Now this is a single wire, pin 7, K-Lion, LIN capture, all right? From 1 volt to 12 volt. Everything looks pretty normal here, pretty good. So let's start by digitizing that. We're going to turn on the digital module, select channel 1, and again, you can see our digital channel has appeared here. 
I'm going to tap that so that our gear appears up here. Our menu comes up. And this time we're going to be choosing the Lin bus. And there it is where the frame is decoded. You've got a header and you've got a response. Header, response. Everything is hunky dory. And the response is orange. Orange is good. Now let's go have a look at that other waveform. This one, where a fault was intentionally created by disconnecting the alternator. Now you would think that the Honda battery management module wouldn't be too happy about that. So let's open it. Well, you know what? Looking at this analog waveform, you wouldn't know it. It looks pretty good. So let's digitize and decode that. Turn on our digital module. Select channel 1. We have a digital channel came on. I'm going to tap it. Go for a little gear. Choose a LIN bus from the menu. And there it's decoded. So we got header and response. It's orange. All is well. All is well. What's this? No response. And red. Orange again, all is well. Another one, no response, red. So, you wouldn't spot that from the analog waveform. You need to have it digitized. All right. Orange is good. Red is bad. Let's go back to the CAN waveform. Remember when I said that blue is good? Just like I said in the LIN waveform, red is bad. And you wouldn't know it from looking at the waveform, the analog waveform. It didn't knock down the network. Yet there is a data communication issue. And it is only seen when you go and digitize this waveform. And I told you that I would come back to this ID number. Okay. I guess it would be nice if we had a database of what uh, all these automotive modules, what their ID numbers are, right? But manufacturers are pretty tight-lipped about that. And um, some uh, of these CAN bus networks are plug-and-play, and they assign a number to the module itself. And this number is not just the ID of the module. There are four... Uh, priority bits at the front end of this, okay? And four zeros means that uh, it wins the arbitration fight. It's going to get priority over um, ID numbers that are higher. So this is still useful for us, okay? So a low ID number is a priority thing. Like if you're having uh, brake issues, uh, ABS stuff or whatever, and you're um, questioning the ABS module and you're getting uh, red on a low ID number, uh, that kind of goes with the symptom and the complaint, right? So you can kind of be sure that if this was red with a low number, that's your ABS stuff. But let's say that it's a climate control issue, not that important, and it was malfunctioning and it was red. 
and you had an ID number that was fairly high, uh, not much priority, that would kind of coincide and jive and make sense that this belongs to the climate control module. Now, all of this is just yet another tool to help us with diagnostics, okay? So you combine that with a complaint, you combine that with your scan tool, you uh, have your thinking cap screwed on tight, and this can add value to our DIAG process. My task here was to tackle a fairly complex subject without getting myself all tongue-tied and being able to present it to you in the most concise way possible. If you think that I've managed to achieve to do so, like, subscribe if you haven't, and share the video out there. Also, my inside track tells me that there are possible future enhancements to this ASCO feature in the way of statistics. If and when that comes about, I'll make an effort to uh, cover it here. Take care, guys.